Hey there, and welcome to a very special episode of Virtual Coffee with a Cop. It is National Dispatch Appreciation Week, and we got a good show for you, Brian. Yeah, uh, we have, we're obviously in the dispatch center live. These dispatchers are working and doing their thing. And with us today, we have a very special guest. We have our Chief of Police, George Cisneros. Thanks for joining us. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, my name is George Cisneros, and today is a great day. Today, we're talking about our unseen heroes for our organization. These are the men and women who answer your calls when you need us. And so they're very important. They start us off right. They get our individuals to assist you at the right location at the right time. I want to thank all of them. They do an extraordinary job, and without them, we couldn't do what we do today. So I want to thank all of the dispatchers here in Anaheim and throughout the nation. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Chief. All right, let's give you the nuts and bolts of this. This is where the rubber meets the road right here. This is the main dispatcher. This is the voice that you hear on the radio. Her job is to communicate with the officers. This is the first responder before the first responder, and she's assisted by her sidekick over there. It's secondary. This is secondary dispatch. If officers need questions or something done off of the main radio frequency so that they don't interrupt any, uh, interrupt any emergency traffic. Crystal, anything to add on what secondary does here? Uh, we do, we call tow trucks. Um, if we need to get a hold of somebody that called us for help and they can't find them in the field, we call back. Um, if there's emergency traffic on the radio and she didn't hear what they say, I'm her secondary ears. Just kind of all behind the scenes stuff. Takes a lot Takes a lot of dispatchers up here to run a big city like Anna. Yeah. And now I think we're going to go up to the table and actually speak with two dispatchers live right now. All right, here we go. We got the real stars of the show. Um, first of all, happy Dispatch Appreciation Week. Um, I can tell you as a, as a sergeant and officer for many years and speaking on behalf of all of the cops out there, you are the unsung heroes and we really, really appreciate what you do. Um, knock, knock. Who's there? Call the... I'll do. Call the police, I've been robbed. No? All right, we'll start with uh, So anyways, um, Jill, um, please tell us um, how long you've been here and how you found your way to be an Anaheim Dispatcher. I've been here for six years. Um, I became a dispatcher because my dad was a police officer for La Palma. He's the one who introduced me to this type of career. I worked at LA County for two years prior to this. You like it? Yes. Yeah? Good place to work? Yay! And Heather, uh, Heather's a pretty interesting story. She's one of our homegrowns. So Heather's been around the block a long time. Heather, how did you find your way from the ground floor up here? Well, uh, I actually started off as a cadet. Uh, I worked taking reports at the front counter, I also worked in personnel, and then I assisted the detectives in vice and narcotics for about two years, and then I moved up here. I've been here for seven years as a dispatcher, and it's been a great experience. I've really enjoyed working here. Right, so if you have any questions, ask at Anaheim.net. Ask at Anaheim.net, we'll answer your questions live on the air. And as always, if we don't get to your questions today on air, we will get to them later on. We go through later on, we, we answer the questions and respond to your comments. So get those out there. Be sure to like us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, um, so we can get those views up. We, had, we did some promos and we asked um, the public to give us some feedback and some questions they might want to hear. And one of the questions that we got a lot of, interestingly enough, was, Tell us about a unique or interesting call. Nothing bad or but a unique or interesting call that you remember, Jill. Um, I don't know if it's really interesting, but <laughs> we had a petting zoo get loose on Ball Road, and we had the officers chasing cows and goats <laughs> down the street. And I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> that was some fun radio traffic too. You had all like the officers yelling, "We've got a, a you know goat running northbound." Yeah. Yeah, so they say that dispatchers, you know, every call they get is is a bad one, and some people aren't having the best day, and that's what makes being a dispatcher kind of a stressful job, you know? Like, nobody ever calls dispatch to say, hey, I'm having a great day, just thought I'd let you know. You know, so it really takes a special kind of person to be up here. And speaking of that, another question we got, Jill, is what, what do you think some good characteristics, personally, that you need to have to be a, a good or successful dispatcher? Um, you definitely need to be a good listener. You need to have a calm demeanor. Um, you need to be able to think quickly on your feet. Uh, this job requires you to think quickly. Um, uh, typing skills help a lot. You need to have a you know a strong voice when you're talking to people. Sometimes people are really afraid when they're on the phone, and you have to be able to get them to engage with you when they're having a really terrible time. So it helps to be able to have those good personal skills. 
and be able to get the information that you need while calming them down. Yeah, you really need to be a, uh, dispatchers are the masters of multitasking. I've been up here and watched the dispatchers and they've, they're they listening to the radio, they're answering calls, they're doing this, they're writing that. Like it's just, it's baffling to me how well that you guys multitask. And that's why um, the dispatch training is how long? Like 18 what, months. 18 months. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so if anybody out there is interested, if anybody out is interested in being a dispatcher, I believe the hiring is open right now and the specific requirements are on our website. Just go to our website, take a look at it. Um, we also do, uh, well, once the coronavirus is over, we, we do limited sit-alongs where you can come up here and see what a dispatcher does if you're interested. Also, we, we appreciate dispatch laterals. We have plenty over here. So if you're a dispatcher in another department, you want to come over here, come on up. So yeah. I got a call one time when I was up here that uh, I told the dispatcher that there was a suspect dancing naked outside and they said, copy that. I said, I'll try, but I'm not much of a good dancer. <laughs> um, all right. So here we go. Do we have any questions? Yeah, hey, we've got people watching from Maine. Maine. Oh, Welcome, wow. Maine. And we're getting a shout out for Julian from Kelsey. Yeah. Hi, Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. Thanks for watching. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of shout outs. Uh, we have two of our most popular dispatchers up here. Okay. So <laughs> what are... How many codes does a dispatcher need to know? Like as a police officer, we have all our codes, but um, interestingly enough, um, and props to you guys, you have to know our codes plus your own. Um, is there any secret to learning codes? Flashcards. Um, you're not required to know these codes before you get hired. They obviously change when you get hired to know these codes. Um, and you usually get hired with somebody else so you can practice having out things all the time, uh, which makes it easier. When I was in training, sorry. When I was in training, I would copy license plates while sitting in traffic. Oh wow! Just practice my phonetics. Reading it's like the so good at what you do. So, during training, it helps sometimes to look up YouTube videos of other dispatchers so you can practice listening to what they're saying. Oh, um, I also had my at the time five year old stepson read me flashcards, so he'd practice his reading and I'd practice my ten codes. Yeah, and when you get hired up here, you're initially the first part of your training is and stop me if I say this wrong. The first part of your training is call taking. So like we showed in the beginning of the show, there's the dispatcher that actually talks to the, the cops and then there's the secondary that's kind of like her right hand man doing all, all the tasks that need to be done. But before you can even get down there and get in the varsity team down there, you have to learn how to answer calls and you know how to type code things and, and organize it and kind of get through the minutia of what people are calling about. So on that, um, do you have any advice that you would give to somebody that's calling 911? Like let's put this, I know this is a pretty probably in-depth answer, but do you have advice that you give somebody calling 911, the do's and the don'ts? Um, definitely know your address or location. That's the main thing. If we have anything, the location is going to be the most important. Um, and then just stay calm and answer all the questions you want to be answered. Go yeah. We are going to ask a lot of questions, and I know that's frustrating for people, especially when you're in the throes of a traumatic incident. But the reason we do that is because it helps us and it helps the officers to know what kind of a situation they're walking into. So, for instance, if someone is dealing with mental illness or uh, if we need a description of a suspect, all of those things are things that can help the officers apprehend the right person and respond to you know the, the correct incident in a way that keeps everyone safe. Yeah, and that's a really good point. Dispatchers don't need to know so much the why of your calling. They need to know the where and the what. The officers will handle the why when you get there. We don't need they don't really need the backstory of what anything that happened. They want to know like the safety things and where you're at specifically. So you don't if you don't know where you're at, the dispatcher they're very good at helping you determine where you're at. Obviously, um, we know where they are based on their phone in, in most cases, right? To an extent. I mean, if you're calling from a landline, it's usually pretty easy to see exactly where you are. If you're calling from a cell phone, usually we can track a general location, maybe to your correct block or you know within, within a few blocks. If you're on a prepaid phone, we usually can't see where you are at all. And you know it takes a lot for us to be able to call the phone company and actually track you down. So it's always best if you can just give us the address right off the bat. Even look at a piece of mail or read off of the license plate that's in a driveway. Things like that can give us clues to where you are if you don't know your address. I would also say be patient with our questioning. We have a lot of questions we ask for our officer safety. Um, so if we're asking you a lot of questions, we've already had the call put in the system. We have officers on the way. We just need you to answer the questions. Yeah, it usually does not delay response. It's just a matter of us trying to get you help fastest. Right, and so for everybody listening and watching here, um, 
we need to make a distinction between the business line and the 911 line, right? So, Heather, can you tell me some things that are definitely 911 type calls? Right, so any kind of 911 call would be something where a person's life is in jeopardy, uh, someone's in imminent danger of getting hurt, or there's a crime in progress. If you're seeing somebody breaking into a house right now or um, assaulting someone right now, those are crimes that you want to call 911 for right away. If it's something where you walked out and your car was burglarized sometime last night, you can definitely call the non-emergency line. Right. And for that number, what's that number? It's going to be 714-765-1900. <laughs> so Jill, um, you've been in this game a long time. What are some of the, the wrong reasons people have called 911? to order pizza. Yeah. <laughs> or we get a lot of missed sales from hotels. Yeah. And then we dial one and you think it is. Um, if you do accidentally dial 911, stay on the phone and let us know it was an accident. It takes a lot of time for us to have to look at the phone number, call you back and wait for the phone to ring or get through any kind of call tree to find out that it was a mistake. Right. So if you do butt dial or you dial 911 by accident, don't hang up because they have to call you back. You're creating more work and there's somebody out there that could probably need some help and they may not get it because a dispatcher is busy, is that correct? Like, don't hang up. A lot of times they'll say, hey, it was an accident. Okay, no problem, they'll hang up. Um, shout out to Kenzie, my mom's a dispatch for APD. Love and support you guys. Thank you for watching, Kenzie, and thank you for your mother for the hard work she does as well. You've got station 33 and station 44 watching 33, you guys. 44, Hi. all right, show's on. <laughs> also, hey, you've also got uh, Andrea watching saying that Captain Young needs to buy you guys lunch. Yeah, I agree, <laughs> Captain Young should buy us lunch. Um, Again, back to the calls. How many? We're we're a pretty big dispatch center. We're a city of 52 square miles. Um, we're huge. We have our dispatch center triples what most dispatch centers, except for like Orange County sheriffs and stuff like that. So, what kind of volume? I know you printed out some stats here. How many calls are we getting a day, a month, a year? What 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 do the numbers look like? We get over 100 calls a day. Um, the 2020 stats show that we had 137,000 calls. Uh, daily, that was 376 calls. Our non-emergency line, uh, we had 320,000 calls for our non-emergency line. That is incredible. Just between the two of us, uh, me and Jill, uh, since January, we've answered over 9,300 phone calls. 9,000? Over 9,000, just the two of us. That is amazing. How does that not wear on you? Like. What do you what do you do to kind of decompress? Like, how do you separate your own feelings? Like, you must get some calls that are pretty strenuous. So, what do you do to kind of separate your personal and your professional feelings? How do you how do you deal with it, Heather? Yeah, you you do. Um, dispatchers are really at a, an increased risk for PTSD compared yeah. to you know the general population. We deal with a lot of traumatic calls, and a lot of times we don't always get the closure that maybe a responding officer might get. We're listening to all of the horrible things that are happening, and we don't have the ability to go there and see how it ended. Right, so if you're a cop and you're watching this, you handle calls, let dispatch know what happened. And we do. A lot of times I'll, I'll reach out and I'll talk to the officers and find out, hey, you know what happened? Or I'll read the call, the reporter, the call later, and see how it was. Yeah. But you don't always get the time to do that. Yeah. And even if you do, sometimes you're in a situation as an officer starts to call. Right. And you might suffer from some of that later. Yeah. And I think it's much for us to rely on each other. And I think it's important for us to, you know, practice breathing and make sure that we are having healthy coping, coping skills. How about you, Joe? What do you do? Um, if I take a difficult call, I usually get up and take a break. Yeah. Walk around, speak with my coworker and see. Um, if they can relate at all. And the supervisors up here are really good about letting them know, hey, if a dispatcher, we have peer support, obviously, if, if you've taken a, a difficult call, kind of pull you off the floor and let you make sure you decompress and detox and stuff like that. That's actually, yeah, I'm, I'm a member. Of the oh, good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it is very helpful for people to, you know, be able to talk to their cohorts who understand the kind of calls that they're going through. Yeah. So. Well, I called dispatch one time and I told them that two girls were fighting over me. And she was like, what's your emergency? I was like, the ugly one's winning. <laughs> oh, anyways. Hey, we got a question. <laughs> we got a question from uh, Kate. She wants to know what a typical shift is from starting to end. All right. What's your shift? What we kind work, of schedules do you guys work? We work 12 and a half hour shifts. Um, and then we have an eight hour payback every other week. So we'll work three twelves one week and then four twelves and an eighth the next week. We work 6 to 6.30 and the graveyard is 6.30 to 6 in the morning. Oh, and what then, much like police officers, I'm assuming you're stuck here on Christmas morning, New Year's Eve sometimes? Yes. 911 never closes. So, 
And should we do a trivia question? Yeah, let's do a trivia question. Um, as, as you ladies know that we do trivia questions, so how about, um, Jill, you can ask the first question. Your question can be for Instagram. Okay, All right, listen to the question. What was the first emergency phone number? The first? What number was introduced in 1937 as the world's first emergency number? Yes, way better. I know, sorry, because I had it written down. I just sprung it on you five minutes ago in the green room. We have one of those. So for Instagram, what was the first emergency number? Hold on, All right, and then I have some, some follow-up on that. And for Facebook, Heather. Okay. What year was the first 911 call uh, introduced in uh, uh, Alabama? Ooh, she's even given the city. All right, what year was that? <laughs> it was a fantastic year, by the way. A lot of amazing things happened that year. That's the year I was born. <laughs> All right. So, how does a person get trained on dispatch? Like, is there something that somebody's thinking about applying? What can they do to make their odds? Because I know, um, in speaking with your bosses, there's like, of 100 people that apply, maybe one gets hired. So what can a person do to increase their odds of, of being successful at getting a job with a dispatcher? Uh, I really suggest doing a sit-along, being able to come up here and see what we actually do. Um, it's different than reading about the job when you actually get to see what we do, and a lot of applicants don't understand that. Um, they get into training and they realize it's a pretty hard job. Um, we have 18 months to finish training. We start on phones, like Brian said, and we go to dispatch. Um, oh, they'll put you through a post academy. You don't need to do that before you get hired. Um, you through a two week class and then you start training. I, I would also add just to know what the requirements of the job really are, like you said. But the holidays and the weekends and the night shifts do really wear on people. And I think sometimes people don't realize how hard that'll be when they go into it. You know, you have to plan on having holidays a different day with your family. And your family should try to be on board so that you're not missing out. Any we have questions? winners, yes. We have winners already? Yeah, we do. All right, let's hear it. On Facebook, we have Kate Pulls Half. Okay, no, we know. Uh, Kate's won one of these before. On Thank you for watching again, Kate. She got, she correctly She's a giant support. What was the question? That was the night, that was the year, right? The year, it was 1968. Okay. Interesting about that. I, I did some research on this. The first uh, U.S. 911 call was made in 1968 in Hallville, Alabama. There's a museum in Hallville, Alabama that's a 911 museum that still has that phone. And they have a festival every year in Hallville, Alabama. We should do a road trip. We should do a road trip film on location maybe next year. Boss, can we do that? Can we get some money and go to Alabama next year? All right, he said yes. <laughs> and then so there's, a, there's a museum there, and uh, 911 Museum, they have a festival every year to commemorate and thank the dispatchers. On Instagram, Inca Girl. Inca Girl. Thank you for watching, Inca Girl. The answer 999. Correct. 999. Okay, so in 1937, in the UK, uh, 999 was the original emergency number. The very first call was a burglar. Somebody said, there's a burglar breaking into my house somewhere in London, I think, or just outside of London, and there was a, an arrest made. Boom, it's successful. So, so send us a message so we can first, get your the, Yeah, the first yeah. 10 minutes into the emergency phone call system, we were batting a 1,000. <laughs> okay, uh, what else did I have on that one? All right, so. Can you describe like when a person calls um, the information other than their location that you're gonna be asking for them? And what, we, we have, uh, the calls come in in a, in a priority, right? right? I don't wanna use the wrong words, but we have priorities one through five. Can maybe you give us like one and two of, of what those would be and then Heather, Take us, take us home on down to five. Um, an example of a one or a priority one or two call would be like a burglary in progress, um, a traffic accident with injuries, a baby not breathing, um, someone being shot at, gotten shot, and um, any kind of medical aid would be a priority one call. Priority two would be. Um, Something that maybe a little bit lesser, yeah. Yeah, like like a like a burglary that just within fifteen minutes. Yeah. All right, so I'm 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 looking out the window and I'm seeing two guys are standing on the street corner and yelling at each other. Where does that go? So my next question would be: Have they actually physically hit each other yet, or right, are they just exactly. arguing? Because so that's a, that's a big distinction, right? It's not against the law to argue, but it is against the law to physically hit each other. So we would definitely change the priority to that. And if someone looks like it's going to escalate, we would still respond out and make sure people are okay. But it, it would be a different priority than an actual physical assault happening. 
okay, so what would you recommend to somebody that says, okay, I woke up in the morning and I, I, found, I went out to my car and I found out my car had been broken into. Right. Um, is that a 911 call, a business call, or is there another option that a person could use? Actually, that's a perfect um, example of something you can do online. Um, recently, we've really expanded our online um, opportunities for reporting. So you can go on our website and just make a lot of those reports over the internet instead of having to wait for us to do a phone report with you. Um, and that's at City of Anaheim? City of Anaheim.net, yeah. and then there's a section for online reporting. But if you don't have access to the computer, you can call us on our non-emergency line and we can make a phone report with you as well. And does it say, what about, um, we have a lot of calls about custody issues. Can you can you kind of explain how how officers or how you separate the priorities for custody? Like I go to my baby mama's house and she's not giving up the kid. It's obviously going to be a lower priority. Um, we'll be in the queue as I keep the peace, and we'll respond out there once we're done handling the emergency calls. Yeah, I think people would, they need to realize, and what the dispatchers are really good at separating. Now here at the police department, we handle matters of criminal. We have you know criminal. We don't handle civil matters. And, Sometimes people get upset with us that, oh, you're, you know, I'm calling you with a problem. Well, it's not a criminal problem. We deal with criminal problems. So before you call the business line or 911, uh, figure out yourself whether this is a criminal issue or a civil issue. And you can also do custody violations online as well. We have a section uh, on the internet where you can do that. If that gets sent to the judge and for your next custody hearing, you can bring up all the violations and let the judge know what you've been dealing with. Awesome. Any shout outs you want to give anybody? Anybody's birthday today? <laughs> no Who's one, watching? No one's birthday, but hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. <laughs> I think my mom's watching. Hey, you've got, we've number got one. viewers worldwide watching. <laughs> what? Iran. Oh, no, wow. we do not. Hi. You do. You Thank have you so much. Polite693 on Instagram watching you from Iran. Wow, well, I think hi. that's a first. Thank you for watching. Any shout outs you'd like to give? No, I don't. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Another piece of trivia that I came across looking at this. Um, do you know why we use 911? Why? We use 911 because when the emergency phone system was created, we had rotary phones. And nine opened up any line, and then 11 was the two quickest to dial 911. Makes sense. So there you go, you learn something new every day. A um, little bit of housekeeping here in Anaheim. Um, I think we're still giving the vaccinations over at the convention center. We're going to be doing that till the end of the month. You can go on the city website to find out if you qualify or what the dates or times for doing that. Um, I spoke with our parks department this morning. Do you know what the newest park in Anaheim is? A little trivia question here. Aloe Park. Aloe Park is open in the Platinum Triangle. It's our, the Anaheim's newest park. How about that? Uh, speaking of parks, uh, Maxwell Dog Park. I drove by there this morning. Um, that's going to be such a cool park. I don't know if you guys have a chance to get out west in my hood and see it out there, but it's just going to be a great park. Um, Everything for all intents and purposes is done. They're just waiting for the grass to grow. Not a joke. They literally are just waiting for the grass to grow because if they open it up too early, everything will get trashed and it'll just be a dirt lot, but it's, it's just other. And then other than that, all of our Anaheim parks are open, um, fully open, everything's good. The only thing is you cannot have tournaments there, so no organized tournaments. But other than that, we are getting back to what we, uh, what we think is normal. Any questions, Mark? Yes. Hey, you do have a, a viewer, Paul Beyer. Paul Beyer? Yes. Yeah. Well, police officer here. Hey, Paul, thanks for and watching. Then, uh, yeah, there's a question. Shout out to my buddy Al, too. <laughs> question from Adeline on Instagram wants to know, do you ever get emotional? Like, oh. Yes. Yeah. And it, we lean on our coworkers a lot. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's times when you have to remind yourself that you're not going to be able to help them unless you're able to stay calm and, you know, continue to not be emotional for them. And sometimes after the call, you have to step away and take a couple minutes to yourself. And that is why you guys really deserve Dispatcher Appreciation Week, because everybody up here, they're mothers and fathers, you know? So when you get those calls that involve kids, it really kind of takes it to another level. You stay home, you don't want to become too involved in it. So again, if we haven't said it enough, thank you so much for everything that you guys do. Any more questions? That's it. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. It's been a really fun episode. We really appreciate the time. And again, thank you, Dispatch, for everything that you do. Uh, we can't thank you enough on this one. And get your questions in at askatanaheim.net. If you didn't get to watch the live version, you can watch the pre-recorded version, answer your questions. We will we'll do that. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, we'll get those gifts out to our trivia winners. Thanks for watching.